So, the Sony Xperia 1 versus the Samsung Galaxy S10. In terms of what you actually see, it's quite a similar story when it comes to the camera itself. Both have a 3-way camera setup with a normal one, a wide angle and of course a 2x optical zoom. But there is a clear difference between the way the two process the image. So let's look at the result and see which one performs better in daylight. So dynamic range, contrast, colors, anything like that. I will just showcase you that in this video. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video after this, be sure to leave a like. And if you of course enjoy it a lot, you can subscribe as well. Anyway, let's dive into this comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S10 and the Sony Xperia 1. So before we start this comparison, let's compare the hardware for both of these cameras. The Sony Xperia 1, just like the Samsung Galaxy S10, walks a triple camera setup, with the main sensor being a 12 megapixel sensor, with a 1.6 aperture and a 1 over 2.6 inch sensor size and 1.4 micron pixel. The second one is a zoom lens with a 12 megapixel sensor and a 2.4 aperture and a 1 over 3.4 inch sensor and a 1.0 micron pixel. And the third one seems pretty similar but is an ultra wide sensor with a 12 megapixel sensor again and a 2.4 aperture and again 1 over 3.4 inch sensor and again a 1.0 micron pixel. On the Samsung side we have a 12 megapixel main sensor with a variable aperture between 1.5 and f2.4 and the sensor is a 1 over 2.55 inch size with a 1.4 micron pixel. The zoom lens is a 12 megapixel with an f2.4 and a 1 over 3.6 inch size and of course 1.0 micron pixel as well. And the wide angle lens is 12 mm compared to the 60 mm on the Sony with a 60 megapixel sensor and 1.0 micron pixel. So on paper these two sound very similar, but hardware is just a part of the story, with software giving you the experience of the device, but also the result you get from it, the way they process the image. But today I don't want to focus on the use of these two, but there are some pointers I will make for the Sony Xperia 1, like why on earth do I have to actually tap for every single camera option that I have? So for a normal lens, then the two times and then the wide angle. Why not have those three options simply laid out like for instance Samsung does? But let's dive into this comparison because this is quite an interesting one. And when we start with this flower there is a huge difference between the two. While both have some issues with overexposed areas, the Samsung Galaxy S10 has the clearer and more natural picture to it. Not to mention that on the Sony Xperia 1 it looks like the flower is somehow cut out in Photoshop and then there is like a blurred background effect added. And because of that the depth has no progression to it, it doesn't feel natural. And yet again in this flower it shows the same issue as the shot before. Yes we do get some nice bokeh effect on the background, but because of the way it's processed it didn't count the depth properly. The focus is made on the flower, making it look unnatural again. See how on the side that has the same distance from the camera itself is in focus on the S10 but blurred on the Sony Xperia 1. But let's move to some more interesting shot. So in this one I really like both of these shots, but I have to give it to Sony, the flower or whatever you want to call it has more detail to it and it looks really good on this. Also I like the contrast more on the Sony. And then on the next one, this clearly shows some problems you will see more in this comparison. The Sony Xperia 1 not only having trouble to getting that proper focus, but also the sky is totally blown out, where on the S10 you can clearly see the clouds behind it. Now this next shot again is an interesting one. In base, the Samsung Galaxy S10 is the better shot. It has the better dynamic range and because of it, more details are retained. But in turn, I like the Sony Xperia 1 better in this one. The picture looks more pleasing and has more depth because of the contrast itself. And this is something I notice more. Because again, in this shot, I like the Sony Xperia 1 better. It has a more warm tone to it and it really works well for a shot like this. But if you want to look at the more realistic one, the Samsung Galaxy S10 is the one that stays more true to life. But again, Sony can deliver some amazing shots even though the dynamic range just isn't on par with the Samsung Galaxy S10. Here I really like both even though it's a very different take between these two and again, the dynamic range is much better on the Samsung Galaxy S10. But here are some more shots showing the difference between the two and the approach both have in terms of color, contrast and of course dynamic range.
So in Stills overall the Sony Xperia 1 can deliver some amazing shots with colors behind it really working well, at least in some cases, but in turn you do suffer from dynamic range that simply cannot compete with the Samsung Galaxy S10 and that can really hurt some shots and of course the focus not always working as well. And then we have video recording. Now before I start though, on the Sony Xperia 1 while recording it shows dropping of frames pretty much all the time. But you don't see that in the final shots. But with that being said, this is really annoying, so I do hope that they fix it. It makes recording of a video not the best experience. So let's dive into this video comparison. I will switch between the audio of both of them and I will indicate that on both of them. So recording on both the Sony Xperia 1 and of course the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. In terms of the features, the Sony Xperia 1 is limited to 30 frames per second at 4K, where the Samsung Galaxy S10 can do 4K at 60 frames per second. On the Sony Xperia itself, on the display at least, it seems that there is a bit of frame drop, but I'm not 100 percent sure. We will find out when we actually get the files itself. In terms of dynamic range, I think the Samsung Galaxy S10 is doing quite a bit better, but again, it's hard to say on the display when the sun is out, um, shining in my eyes properly. So it's a bit hard to say. Uh, I'm working a bit on a slightly buffer surface, I guess. Where the, well, buffer, I mean, it's not really, but you get the idea. Not an even surface. Just test it out a bit more. Seeing the rays of the sun actually coming behind the clouds. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. So, in terms of what I'm seeing right now, the S10 quite a bit clearer and the Sony Xperia taking a bit of time to actually capture. Uh, what I'm seeing properly. So it went from uh, a bit dark to proper. Yeah, it seems that the Samsung Galaxy S10 is doing the better dynamic range focus test on the Sony Xperia 1. Again, the dropping frames on the phone it doesn't look nice. Not sure. What is up with that? Also the focus isn't the fastest. There of course I'm focusing on something quite small. So I'm now taking a bit further away to see how it deals with that. Now the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus focus test. Much faster. Yeah, much faster. So this was the Samsung Galaxy S10 versus the Sony Xperia 1 in daytime shots. While I think the Sony Xperia 1 can deliver some amazing shots, it without a doubt needs some work. Especially with dynamic range and focus. And of course the way they add this weird fake blur on the background that just doesn't work. Especially with shots from like flowers. It simply falls short. But I imagine software updates can fix some or most of these issues, especially with those close-ups where I really don't like the way they actually cut that out. Anyway, let me know what you think of both of these and of course which one you like and which one you don't and what do you think Sony needs to work on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and of course give it a like if you enjoyed this video because that's something that really works well for YouTube. So I appreciate that and of course if you love my videos don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, talk to you guys in the next one and of course I will compare both of these in low light situations as well.